Hey, howdy, hey, friends and neighbors. Scott here. Let's try this again. This is the third time I'm trying to record this. The first time I was interrupted by a scam phone call. The second time there was a loud noise. Third time's the charm. Today we are looking at Equisetum hymail, which is one species of horsetail. There are several horsetail species. Equisetum, uh, is it Arvinsa, I, I believe is the, another very popular species. Um, they have some similar properties. They are not all equally usable, so you do want to make sure that you get the correct species, one of the usable ones. And um, this species is the one favored by Doug Simons. He does a lot with the Grow Network. This is, this is uh, their favorite one. So I thought we would uh, talk about this today, also because I just finished a, uh, a uh, rough draft of an article for them that I've just turned in, so all this information is fresh on my mind. So uh, to make sure that you get the correct species, we'll need to know how to identify it, and this is how. Horsetail is a spore producer. It's not flowering. And uh, so in that way, it's very much like a fern, but this species of horsetail is non-branching typically, so it's much more rush-like to look at it, just these stalks that come up, stems that come straight up out of the ground. And um, I say they're usually non-branching. Sometimes they will branch a bit, and this had me confused for a while because I bought some of this from a nursery a while back, and for a, for a good while, I thought that I had the wrong species, that they'd mislabeled it because it was branching. But then in doing all the research, I realized that, oh, it does occasionally branch. So now I'm very happy. I, I have confirmed again that I have the correct species, so I can continue you know, growing and propagating it for all of the uh, you know, medic medicinal uses I want to use it for. Now, it's not leafy in the traditional sense. It does technically have leaves. The leaves are very small, and they're all together forming a sort of a sheath around these points on the stem. Underneath the sheath is a node, and it's a weak part of the plant. If you're harvesting it, you can bend it right there and kind of pull and pop that part of the plant right off uh, for easy harvesting. Th that's a good um, identifier from other horsetails. Some of them will look sort of similar, but this one has that grayish sheath, and it's uh, sort of toothy at the end. It won't be toothy year-round. Uh, they'll drop the teeth, but on either side of the band are these thin, uh, dark, near-black rings, and that's that pattern is a real good identifier along with the non-branching nature. At the end of some of the branches, at some times of the year, will be a pinecone-like structure. This is where it produces the spores, and it's how it, one of the ways it reproduces. It also reproduces from uh, rhizomes under the ground, and um, that's a really handy way for it to reproduce. Once it's in your yard or your garden, it's pretty difficult to get rid of, and don't till it up if you're trying to get rid of it, because then you'll have a bunch of it. But you can find this in wet ground. It does not like to be dry. It loves to be wet, and it can even be in standing water up to about four inches. If you are at a more northern latitude, it's going to be in places where there's full sun, and if you're in a further south latitude, you're probably going to find this in at least partial shade uh, because it just gets hot and awfully intense with the sunlight around here. This will be an evergreen plant in the more southern areas, and it will be deciduous in northern ones, dropping the stems and growing new ones. That's the uh, name, by the way, hymail has to do with winter. It refers to the winter interest of the plant. <coughs> oh, pardon. Not going to stop this video for a little cough. The equisetum part refers to uh, the equi or equi is like a horse, like an equine. And then the sedum is like sea tie. It means a bristle, sort of like the, the sea tie on an earthworm. If you ever play with an earthworm, you feel that as it tries to wriggle away, it has these little um, rough hair like uh, extensions along the body. There you go. Words are fun. On the edible side of things, the young stalks and the roots are both said to be edible. I myself have not ever tried them. Once my horsetail spreads enough, I'm sure I will, but I haven't had a good opportunity to yet. So you may want to look a little bit of that up on your own um, just to double check that before you try it. But they're both supposed to be edible. I just don't have practical experience to, uh, to give to you. Medicinally, they are great. Horsetail has a lot of silica, but not just any silica, because although silica is very abundant, it's not very absorbable. It's very useful to the body, but it's hard to get it in the body in a, in a form that we can use. Except, 
<laughs> um, some plants do have absorbable forms, and horsetail has, if not the most, and it, it may it may have the most, but if not the most, it's near the very, very top uh, in terms of plants with this absorbable form of silica. And that's great because you don't have to take as much of an inferior form to be able to still get the medicinal effects. So you don't have to, you know, rough up your system with a bunch of, you know, scratchy, irritating silica. The young stalks are the very best. They have a lot more, a lot higher percentage of this absorbable form of silica floating around in the plant. And then as they get older, some of that will be settled down and it will, you know, harden into the plant. But it, even the older stalks contain it. This is, it's an armor plant. It wants to armor you up entirely, inside and out. It's good for strengthening and building up your teeth, bones, cartilage, your hair and nails and your skin, and just all of your connective tissue and support structures. Basically, if it holds you together or props you up, it wants to strengthen it. Um, it, will, it will literally thicken your skin. There is not a plant that makes you bulletproof, but I guess if we were going to pick something to get you as close as possible, this would be it. I mean, it won't make you superhuman, but it should make you a little bit tougher if you consistently use it over a period. And I don't mean that it's going to make your thin, leathery, your skin leathery and unpleasant. That's that's not what I mean at all. But it um, it uh, it just toughens it up. This actually uh, is used as a um, a, a beauty aid uh, to give you more wrinkle-free skin because it strengthens the the collagen and the uh, elastic fibers that keep your skin unwrinkled looking young and beautiful. Topically you can use this to stop bleeding and you can use it as a wound powder. So if you have a cut or a scratch or something stick it on there and it will stop the bleeding. I presume it might do it internally although I do not know. But it will topically and it's also antimicrobial to help it from getting infected, and it has some healing stimulating properties, so it's a vulnerary. It's a good, it's an all-around package for that kind of thing. Uh, it's like, like yarrow in that way. And it's also diuretic to help flush out the kidneys and the bladder and keep those healthy and uh, keep infection from getting in there. And it has some cholesterol modulating properties, and it may be a potential cancer fighter. A lot of plants are. We may need some more um, research just to verify that, but it seems to have promise in that regard. So, how much of this do you want to take? Well, the fresh plant can just be chewed here and there when you find it. You can get it and chew it and suck the juices out. But typically we powder this, and if you're going to powder it yourself, wear a mask uh, or take some other precaution to keep from breathing in the dust because it is high in silica, which can irritate or even damage your lungs, and nobody wants that. But you would want to take about a heaping teaspoon, a tea, a teaspoon in water and a daily, just drink it all down, about half as much for kids. And rather than just starting at that amount, you probably want to start with something below that and then gradually build up to it, just so you don't shock your body with a, a bunch of silica all at once. Just uh, make, make sure you give your body some warning you know, for the first week or so. But you can take this about 6 to 12 days out of the month for a maintenance dose if you're already strong and healthy. But if you're trying to build up or repair after some damage, you can take it a lot more often. You can take it for a lot longer. Um, something like 5 to 10 days each day with a few days off and then repeat that, that would be good for building you up. Your body likes to take it in bursts rather than continually. So if you took it for 5 to 10 days with a couple of days off in that pattern, you would see more results than if you just took it every day. Food for thought. Um, and then if you're using it as a, a wound powder, you just use it as, as needed. There are a couple of cautions. One is that excessive chewing of the fresh plant can wear down your teeth, which is kind of ironic since it's one of the things that strengthens your teeth. Um, but just for just for the occasional you know nibble, it's not really anything to worry about. <laughs> um, if you if you take a bunch all at once, it can irritate your digestive tract. Or if you get into some truly excessive dosages, you can also irritate your digestive tract, and we don't want to do that. And um, excessive consumption of the fresh plant for a long period of time can cause a vitamin B deficiency. Um, horsetail contains. Thiaminase, uh, it's an enzyme that, that uh, prevents the absorption of thiamine, which is one of the B vitamins, 
um, and it may it may actually actively deplete it from the body. It's typically not a problem, um, especially if you're getting extra vitamin B in your diet. But I just bring it up because it is one of the things that can happen. Now I'm seeing a blank screen. I assume that you're seeing my shameless plug for the um, Forager's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse Patreon page. If you want to head over there and support the cause or get some extra neat bonus things, you can go to patreon.com slash forager's guide and uh, you can look at all the different goodies that I have over there for as little as $1 a month. $1 a month. Hey, you can afford $1 a month. Or, or not, whatever you want to do with it, it's your money. <laughs> I mean, I'm not your boss. So I will see you later with another video or a post. I want you to keep your eyes out for plants and zombies. And until I see you next time, happy foraging, everybody.